Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gobenati Sususa. I am the SRC Treasurer General. I would like to welcome everyone to another webinar of our Women's Month series of webinars. Before we go into today's topic, I would like to give over to Madam President Kasha Khompashele to give us the vision behind the series of webinars. Over to you, Madam President. Thank you very much, Madam TG, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, August has been a quite dreadful month, plagued with a series of gender-based violence-related incidences. In a month where women are supposed to be celebrated, we see them getting killed, missing, and sexually violated by both their loved ones and strangers. Some of these women are mothers and heads of families who have been displaced by state institutions through evictions and abolitions of their homes during a global pandemic. The people whom they have entrusted to protect them are the ones who are violating them in state every day, which has been quite a very problematic thing and it's, a, it's an issue that we are currently facing as a country and as a globe. Um, so it has been, August has been a quite eventful month and we have realized that women need and deserve some encouragement and upliftment during this period. So as the SRC, we thought it would be great to celebrate women's achievements and to also bring home the knowledge that would be of great significance to our lives. So the series of these webinars is to enlighten and empower women in all the fields. We are talking leadership, entrepreneurship, sports, arts and culture, wellness, amongst other things. So in an attempt to achieve this, we have, invented, um, we have invited a diversified panel of prominent women who have been excelling in different fields to share their knowledge with us. So that is why we thought it's best to close off the month of August with um, webinars that will encourage and uplift women. So yeah, that is just the vision behind this series of webinars. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Madam President. That was very insightful. And so now we are, today we'll be discussing women in leadership and uh, we have our guest speaker, Natasha Mazzone, who is the DA Chief Whip in Parliament and she will be briefly telling us what leadership means to her and how she got into leadership. Hi, my name is Natasha Mazzone and I'm the DA's Chief Whip in Parliament. I am 41 years old and I started my political career when I was 21. I was elected as a city councillor in the city of Tswani municipality, which is up in Kauteng, uh, in Pretoria. I always knew that I wanted to be a politician. So the aim of the game was to get as politically involved as I could while I was at varsity. Uh, please don't follow my example. I got so politically involved, I never finished my degree. So I'm known as one of South Africa's most famous matriculants, something that I'm not very proud of. So I'm busy doing my master's degree at the moment. Being a woman in leadership uh, is challenging for, for many reasons. And it's in this country, probably the most obvious is the fact that patriarchy is so entrenched in our everyday life. I used the example the other day when I did a debate in Parliament on gender-based violence that the President of our country very proudly stood up and, and showed the country uh, not only were they handing out free condoms uh, at universities and at schools, but they were handing out different flavoured condoms because a man's right to have sex is so entrenched that, of course, condoms needed to be handed out for free. But still, so many of our sisters miss a week of school or a week of varsity every month because they don't have access to sanitary wear. So these are some of the, the challenges that face us. And although they never faced me, I feel very responsible because I think that as a woman in leadership and as a woman who has the opportunity to have my voice heard, I need to stand up for, for all women, uh, regardless of their circumstance. It's also challenging as a woman to decide how you're going to balance your family and your career. Now, I don't have children and strangely enough, I never wanted children. But the first question I get asked is, oh, are you one of those career women? Well, yes, I am a career woman, but that doesn't mean that my family isn't very important to me. I have five nieces and nephews who I absolutely adore. 
I'm the youngest of uh, three siblings and I helped grow these children. So I feel very much like I've been through the process already. I, I don't have children and I watch my colleagues who do have children and, and they handle it uh, just fine. And, you know, we, 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 we find ways to do it. And, and the thing is, as women, we are good at multitasking. And, and this is something that's always to our advantage. I often get asked if I work in a male dominated field. And yes, I do think that in the past politics was a male dominated field. But we must never forget that we stand on the shoulders of giants such as Albertina Sisulu and Helen Sussman, and they forged the way forward so that women like me and that you can stand for leadership positions and not ever have to second guess ourselves and not have, ever have to wonder, should we be here and do we have a right to be here? The fact of the matter is, in my career, I have found more women trying to stop me from reaching my goals than men. So just remember that there is a special place in health for women that don't help other women. It is incredibly important as you go through life that where you can, you help a sister along. And it's not necessary to always criticize another woman in public. It's sometimes a lot easier and a lot better to criticize them where no one can hear and to just whisper something in their ear. I think that being a South African woman, especially, uh, should actually go on a CV as listed as a special task. I don't know about you, but I live in constant fear. I'm constantly worried about my safety. I'm constantly worried about the safety of my family. I'm constantly looking over my shoulder to make sure that no one's following me. I constantly make sure that no one's slipping something into my drink. It's not a good place to be. And I think that we all suffer from an element of post-traumatic stress and just general stress from being a woman in South Africa. And it's something that's very real. We have to be alive to the fact that so many of our colleagues and so many of our friends and people that we encounter in life will have been abused or will have been raped at some point in their lives. Some will talk about it and some won't. So we must always imagine that who we're talking to could have gone through the worst possible experience. And we need to understand that in this country, it is a very real possibility and that being kind is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of great strength. So this Women's Day, the message that I'm trying to get across is that women actually need to stop just talking about what's wrong and start standing up and start actually making their voices heard. There are some incredible women's organizations on the go at the moment. There's Fight Back SA, and they are training young women as to how to look after themselves uh, in case they are attacked, they teach self-defense classes and they also teach you what to look out for. Um, if you're out with the girls on a night and you, you know, you find yourself in a difficult position, there is another wonderful organization that launched on the 24th of August called Safer Spaces. So you'll be able to go on the internet and check whether a, a place is, um, has been accredited as a safe place and whether you know that if you're being bugged or if someone is harassing you, they have an ambassador on the premises that will help you in a difficult situation. We as women need to help these particular organizations. We need to help them grow and we need to start realizing that we have to help ourselves. I did a, a plea to South African men to stand up and, and to talk out against men who are attacking women. But I think we also need to do a plea to fellow women to, to stand up and help each other. If you know someone is being abused, do everything in your power to help them get out of the situation and do everything in your power to help them not feel like a victim, but to realize that the fact that they've survived an attack makes them a hero. So in conclusion, let me say that I wish
Welcome back, everyone. We now have our two panelists right here, Sis Miles and Ole Tujomo. I would just give a brief bio. I will start with Sue Smiles. Sue Smiles has a Bachelor of Social Sciences, Social Work, and an LLB from Rhodes University, and an LLM and a higher diploma in Labor Law from Wits University. She is a social worker and an admitted attorney. After university, she practiced law in Johannesburg before working at Wits University. At WITS, she was part of the WITS Wonder Women project that develops women in leadership positions. In addition, she was a mentor on the WITS Wonder Girl project that was a Carnegie-founded development program. Following many happy years at WITS, she moved to Rhodes as the director of social projects, special projects, sorry. She now holds the title of director in the office of the vice chancellor. She believes she strongly, she believes very strongly in giving back to the community and has been president of child welfare for a number of years. She is also a trustee on the Uyinene Mkhojana Foundation. Sue is the council representative on the sports council executive of the university. Sport still remains an absolute passion of hers, but sadly, in recent years, time has not permitted her to compete. This is something she really hopes to change. At a training session at the beginning of the year with the student sports leaders, she shared with them that she has played all the sports represented there on that day, with the exception of the martial arts and archery. Um, and then I will go and give a brief bio of Olwe Tulomo. Olwe Tulomo is currently doing honors in environmental sciences her interests are centered around reading, playing Sudoku, adventuring, holistic health, and taking photos. Her current leadership roles consist of Chair of Soul Society, Vice Chair of Students, of Students Council, Head of Marketing for Events Group Organic Life, and lastly, an active member of Makana Plastic Action Group. She believes that in everything she do, she is consistently trying to be conscious and through that, sharing knowledge with people. Welcome, Sue and Oluetu. I would first start with Sue. I want you to tell us how you ended up in leadership and also include your challenges that you have faced, the opportunities, and how you managed to balance work, uh, leadership duties, and your own personal life and any advice that you'd like to give to young women who aspire to be leaders. Thank you. I'd like to first thank um, for the honor of being invited to talk here today on women's sports leadership. And I'd like to congratulate the SRC for introducing this very important initiative, which I think in itself shows leadership. The first topic is how I ended up in leadership in sport. And it all began here at Rhodes University. Where leaders learn applies to me. My leadership skills post-school really developed in the space afforded to me at Rhodes University. At the time, I did not realize how valuable the structure of student-run sports clubs was in my development as a leader in sport, and indeed in all the leadership roles that I assumed. At Rhodes, I raised up the ranks of the hockey club, and then in the Student Sports Council, where I ultimately became the chair. It was a turbulent time as we headed out of apartheid. I had the privilege of negotiating with Mr. Vuyu Cutler, our Rhodes University Chair of Council until two months ago, the first non-racial sports constitution at the university. We were the first university in South Africa to achieve this feat. This is where my leadership in sport essentially began. In this space, I was afforded opportunities to grow and learn as a leader and to take risks while operating in the supportive structure of sports administration. Following my time at Rhodes, I moved to Johannesburg to do my law articles. Not knowing many people at all, I joined a hockey club in Randburg. It was a wonderful way to meet people. Again, I found myself rising up the ranks of the hockey club and ending up as president of the hockey club. I captained the first team until the birth of my daughter in 2006. I also assumed leadership roles in Southern Gauteng Hockey and in USA Hockey. 
hurdles and challenges I faced as a woman in sports leadership. We still see tremendous resistance to what is viewed by some as woman, encroach as woman encroachment onto traditional male discursive territory. Sport is seen as a particularly male-dominated area. You just have to ask yourself how often you find women sports commentators or women in sports leadership positions. I think we were all surprised to see Gukandri Govinda appointed on the 19th of August 2020 as the new acting CEO of South African Cricket. The truth be told, if there had been opportunities for to me to follow a profession in sport, I would have done so. Unfortunately, as a woman in that era, this was not a dream that I could follow. I sometimes reflect on how different my life would be today if I'd had had the opportunities that were available to my male counterparts. As women, we tend to undervalue ourselves. We're expected, there are expected gender norms. From an early childhood, we are taught that our well-being and ultimate success is contingent upon acting in stereotypical ways, such as being polite, soft-spoken, compliant, and relationship-orientated. Often, if a woman is assertive, she is labeled as aggressive, in contrast to similar behavior in men. Throughout our lifetimes, this is reinforced through the media, social media messages, and in many cases, one's family. It is important that you do not live your life circumscribed by the expectations of others. If you do, you will have a limited life. As hard as I know it is, you don't have to act in the ways you were taught. You have choices. Grow into your role as a leader. The third area that I was asked to cover was the opportunities I had in leadership. Playing in a sports team is a unique experience, and that by its very nature, competitive sports teams are by selection. Competitive sports teams are diverse. It is an amazing opportunity to play in teams with persons that you might not otherwise get to know or become close friends with. I was generally the team captain throughout my sporting career, and this afforded me the privilege of leading an ongoing, wonderful melting pot of players. Through this experience, I learned a great deal about myself and how to motivate and gain the respect of fellow team members and deal with various issues that come with competitive sport. All these life lessons I could then take back into my work life. I learned many valuable life lessons through my leadership roles in sport. On reflection, Playing competitive sport throughout my life taught me to play to win, and in an extraordinary way, this competitive streak on the sports field gave me the courage and the confidence to compete in a male-dominated world in which we live. By being a leader in sport, I was able to take the lessons learnt on the sports field into other areas in my life. In a strange way, I can say that playing sport helped me to learn what I call the language of the male game. As far as how life, work, balance, leadership duties, and my personal life go, time is a scarce resource. It is irreplaceable, and it is irreversible. I have to say that this is probably the area of my life that I find most difficult to manage. I find it hard to balance work, leadership duties, family responsibilities, and my personal life, and it is normally my personal life that suffers. I would like to share with you a couple of guidelines that I've learned through the years and that I try to apply in time management and in balancing life challenges. Manage your stress levels. As a sports person, as you can expect, I advocate that a healthy body is a healthy mind. Avoid crises through planning. Take control. Learn to delegate efficiently. Get yourself organized. Conquer chaos through planning and organizing. Part of finding the balance might mean scheduling a quiet hour where you don't take calls, visits, or interruptions whatsoever. Set objectives and milestones. Expect the unexpected. There's no day in my office that goes according to plan. Prioritize. Learn to spend your high-energy time on big, big projects and not menial tasks. Finally, I was asked to partake advice to young women who are in leadership positions and those who would like to be leaders. I have a number of points of advice that worked for me and hopefully will further develop your own unique style as a young woman aspiring to be a leader. 
Success breeds success. It has been said that you gain courage and confidence from doing the things that you think you cannot do. The problem encountered by m many women is that they often allow others to sidetrack them from their early dreams and career goals. Do not lose yourself in somebody else's priorities or societal expectations. Use self-talk to counter the need to have everyone like you in all the time. Trying to achieve that feat is an impossibility. I'm comfortable being direct. Don't be fearful of hearing the accusation that as a woman you are too aggressive or pushy. Women will often avoid saying things that should legitimately be said. Holding your tongue only serves to make you frustrated and appear less willing than you are really are to speak up for what you believe. Learn to be assertive. An assertive woman believes in the basic human rights of all persons. An assertive woman stands up for herself, expressing feelings honestly and comfortably while respecting others' rights. There are four characteristics that can be found in an assertive woman. An assertive woman feels free to state what she thinks, feels, or wants. In doing this, if it causes an argument, she can cope with this. An assertive woman can communicate in honest, appropriate, and is direct with other people. An assertive woman goes after what she wants in life and takes responsibility for herself. An assertive woman acts in ways that make her respect herself. I would like to think that we can be optimistic about change when we think about what leadership is and what we can do and women's engagement with it. For example, one of the most powerful political movements of the last few years is the Black Lives Matter movement. It was founded by three amazing women, namely Alicia Garza, Patrice Caloris, and Opal Tometi. And look at what they have achieved. I would like to leave you with words from George Emery. Life is a series of choices. Some choices are good, others are bad. The challenge is to be independent when the world is falling in on you. You can do this when you realize that you have the power to choose how you think, feel, and act, even if you cannot control the rest of the world. You can't control the cards that are dealt to you, but you can choose how you want to play them. I wish you all the best in your leadership roles. Those at Rhodes are at the very best university for developing these skills. Use all the opportunities available to you and follow your dreams and believe in yourselves. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Sue. That was very inspiring. And I would like to remind everyone, before I move over to Oluetu, do not forget to follow us and ask your questions. You can ask on Facebook, Rhodes SRC. You can also text on WhatsApp. The number is 68 so I would like to move to Oluetu. Oluetu, um, I have a few questions that I would like you to answer. Um, so firstly, how did you end up in leadership? Um, I think I've only been in like leadership roles quite recently, and it was quite ironic because I actively didn't like aspire to be in leadership roles. I think more so I just prefer being like behind the curtains and advising. So like. Um, people wanted me to be in the roles, and I suppose I the labels bestowed on me, but I like had to take the um yeah some positions um there's that, and then I suppose in general, I really do enjoy like being involved in projects and stuff, so um like I've always thought like people who actively seek power people who actively want to be in roles don't necessarily want to do the work. I think we like the idea of being in leadership, but the responsibilities people don't see. So, um, yeah, it was just something I didn't really look for, and now I'm here, I okay. guess. Yeah. All right, so would you say there were any challenges that you have faced in, as a woman in leadership? Um, I would say yes, um, for many reasons, because I think, like you said, I am... Um, currently doing my honors in environmental science so like I suppose activism or the projects I do get involved in is quite um, distant to my social identity so like environmentalism is 
pretty much involved with like the ecological side is very distant from the social side and it's always been like the white man's like territory um so in terms of challenges um being head of so 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 is um the students organization for animal rights and we also are the environmental society um it's just had a history or there's a perception that people think it is a a white hippie society so being a black woman and being an interested in environmentalism i think there are microaggressions that come with it both from i suppose um people not knowing how to engage in that like realm so the challenges i do fi- like face would probably be um i'm not i suppose being a black woman if you say activism people would just think you're only in tune with political activism and it's not really branched out so to say i'm into environmentalism um it is quite a new terrain and yeah just microaggressions in that sense yeah all right thank you so much uh oleki so uh how would you say you balance your research do you do research yeah yes so you balance research um the leadership position and your own personal life so how do you the um I'd be lying if I said like I'm perfect and I can do everything. Um it is quite hard but I think I was just thinking last night I have like a mental model like every day I try live my life such that I focus on my short term or daily goals, my medium goals and my long term goals and I suppose with just my general philosophy for life um intersection wow intersectionality is something i do think about so in terms of balancing it i think being organized is probably like the biggest thing i would like i try and implement and um yeah sometimes the lines can get blurred and like i suppose similar to suit like um my mental health was probably jeopardized but i suppose i am i actively try and like focus on that it's just like i'd be lying if i said everything is in line so it's just a give and take yeah All right and um the last question do you have any advice to young women who aspire to be leaders and some who are already leaders and also looking at the time of the year we are approaching elections for the SRC for house comms and for societies so is there something that you would like to to give to young women who want to occupy those spaces i think in any like dynamic we need representation um cuz when we think of the plight of what it means to be a woman like that's been generally celebrated but it's like no um with my social identity as a black woman i go through something as a white woman woman they go through something we need more queer women we need more like trans women so just the one advice i would like suggest is um it ca- that i think the idea can be intimidating but we're all entering new terrain and i always just see it as you know in 10 years time we are making that example we like paving the way and it's not in the name of like active activism i just think um in terms of finding solutions or you know being as intersectional or inclusive as possible we need representation um yeah all right um thank you so much olwe too that was olwe too please do not forget to send through your comments your questions we are on facebook roads src we are also on whatsapp 0680518784 So there is a comment that I have for Sue. So it reads as follows. Thank you very much Sue for sharing your experience with us. It is very empowering to hear that it is possible. A lot of us are sh- a lot of us shy away from sports when we get to varsity because we don't know how to balance. Thank you very much for the words of encouragement and support. Thank you. <laughs> so um Can I comment on that? Yes, you can. Just to say thank you very much for that comment and I'm not sure if you all are aware but our SRC president um is a a leader in sport 
um, she's a, a brilliant basketball player. And I think that what I found m and find most important about the sport issue is that I it's actually a stress reliever. So once you've played your sport, you go back, you find that you're more productive, you have a clearer mind, and often built-up tension is released. So I think it's really, really important, as busy as it is at university, to try and build in some time for, for exercise. I think it's really, really important. Okay, thank you so much, Sue, for that. Um, we also have a question, and I would like to pose the question to the both of you. So when you face challenges as a leader, what encourages you? Mm. I'll let you go. <laughs> what encourages me? Um, what encourages me to do better or like to keep moving? Um, okay, I think what encourages me is, is there's a mental model I have in my head, just like... Um, in anything I do, would I make my younger self proud? So not to say that I there's a superiority complex that, oh no, people are going to look up to me in the future, not like that. I just think what encourages me is that like everything that I do try and do, all the activities I think I like participate in, I think um, for me it's important to just leave that footprint in terms of, um, you know, as a Pan-Africanist, like, when we think of social issues, like bringing it back to home, but at the same time, um, not decolonizing, but just making it intersectional. So what encourages me is that we currently don't necessarily live in a system that was built to listen to us. So for me, it's like I am trying to, you know, contribute to the game, but not necessarily play, you know, according to the rules. So, yeah. Thank you, Aleti. So just to understand the question, it's what to do when faced with challenges. Is that correct? When you are faced with challenges as a leader, what encourages you? What encourages you? you? Um, I think what encourages me is that I've been faced with many, many challenges. And as success breeds success, as you overcome challenges, it gives you confidence to know that if there's a challenge, you rise up and you face it, and you continue. And I think the more you face challenges, um, the more confidence you get in facing those challenges. So I find also that um, there are a lot of people that are often reliant on me. Um, and if I fold in the face of a challenge, um, what impact will it have on them? So I think what encourages me is to know that my life um, and the impact of what I do impacts on others. And, and that encourages me to make sure that I rise above whatever challenge faces me. All right, thank you. And um, this one is for Sue. I heard you are a trustee of the Uinene Foundation. What role do you think leadership can play in combating the um, scourge of gender-based violence in our communities? I think leadership in the area of gender-based violence is absolutely essential. Um, yes, I am, uh, have the privilege of being a trustee on the Uyanene Mkwechana Foundation. And what, as the foundation, we are trying to do is to celebrate Uyanene's life. Um, we want to, and particularly her mother, um, has led the vision for the foundation, which is to arise um, Uyanene. And you'll see that I'm wearing... Um, of the foundation today, which says that I am Nene, um, and it says, um, yeah. So uh, basically, what the foundation wants to do is to is to remember Uya Nene and that her life not be in vain. That we take forward her legacy and we make sure that that doesn't happen to others. Um, I'm the legal advisor on the foundation, and for me, I want to challenge um, the laws of our land. 
I want us to look at how we deal with gender-based violence in our court system and what can we do to change at the very highest level, not at a, at a low level, but at the highest level in the land. How can we challenge the laws to make sure that um, we can deal adequately with cases of gender-based violence? And also um, the, the state advocate's office, they are severely limited in the resources that they have and you know how do we unlock resources in this area to ensure that we can prosecute those that commit these hyenas crimes um, and that they are brought to task all right thank you so much sue for that um we're going to go on a quick break but before we go to the quick break please do not forget to go to our facebook page roads src to post in your questions and we also have whatsapp 068-051-8784. Rhodes SRC webinar series, In Conversation with Women, coming back soon. Rhodes SRC webinar series. All right. Um, as we were still busy with the questions to our two speakers right here, we have a follow-up question for Sue. Are you mentoring young women who may be potentially be leaders? I always try and have a few students that I mentor, um, and generally they're from the law faculty, um, and I they shadow me to a large extent um, in what I do, so they become involved in matters that I do day to day. Um, I do have a lot of, of female um, students or no longer students from when I was at WITS, from the Wonder Girl project um, that I'm still in contact with, and also those that have I've been involved in their lives while at Rhodes um, I are still very special and dear to me, and I do my mentor them on an ongoing basis when they have difficulties in their life. So I would say there's probably a group of about 10 or 15 young um emerging amazing wonderful woman that i that i do mentor on an ongoing basis all right thank you sue and now we have a comment for Oluetu. it is very encouraging to see young women such as Oluetu occupying these spaces continue representing us and cementing yourself magwande thank you <laughs> thank you um yeah Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Oletu. And then there is also a question for you. Do you think being in leadership is helping you shape your career beyond your honors studies? Um, yes, definitely. I think I should have added in my first question. Um, before actually getting like official leadership positions, um, like I was very much involved in the environmental council center and um, just occupying spaces that weren't for me I suppose like officially like didn't have didn't have the qualifications like not having a degree or not being in those spaces but being invited by like adults and stuff and I suppose um, I guess in like any dynamic um, I shouldn't say it's sad because I am in the privilege of being in those spaces but I suppose um, industries and stuff do favor people who have, um, who do lead. Yeah, so to answer your question, yes, um, definitely. And sorry, I have one more thing. Just being in leadership, like in leadership roles, there's this assumption that like you would call all the decisions and you like, you know, are the only person. But I think in working with a team, um, I just see it as like operating a ship like you get the person who steers but the people who set the sails and the people who work on the engines are just as important so I suppose being in 
these positions has really helped me to understand team dynamics in a different way because like um, I suppose if you're not in like vice or chair positions you have the choice to not fall back but if you are in those positions like you have to take that proactive role so um, it's given me like the privileges to just understand like team psychology and just yeah understanding those dynamics all right thank you Ole. I see a lot of questions are actually <laughs> coming now so a question again for you Ole. what obstacles have you faced becoming a leader who inspired you and why lastly what advice would you give to young women leaders entering a male dominated profession um okay so I'll answer the last one because it, it flows with. Okay, so um, what is it like being in a male-dominated like atmosphere? Um, it's it's quite difficult. Um, I must say, just on a micro level, um, many of the like microaggressions that do come with it, and I think being based in so I minored in com in computer science. Um, I do environmental science, and those are very male-dominated spaces. And, like, I think more so, like, social science is very disconnected to, like, um, the, the hard physical sciences. So I think with that, just being, doing projects, like, small group work things, again, I don't know why, but I would be, like, the group leader. People tend to not, um, like, validate you. And... It just puts you in this position where you don't want to live a life where you have to prove yourself because, like, are you doing it for yourself? Um, so, yeah, those are the challenges I do, like, face. And um, I suppose with that, since I guess it is very new terrain and um, there aren't many people that look like me, um, what I do find is that my issues aren't exclusive in my field. So the people I do look up to, sat, well, in high school, sadly, they were very male-dominated and they were all scientists. But I think, like, now, who I look to are women who aren't necessarily freedom fighters, but, like, people who are doing the same thing as me. Um, and I think people who are just unapologetic and bold. And I think those, I mean, it is very, like, cliche, but, like, if I'm assertive, I'm bossy, and that's not the case. Like I, um, I pride the fact that we are in a space where women can be dominant, but at the same time, women can still be passive, and that's okay. Like being a strong-willed woman doesn't mean you have to be, you know, the model figure of being assertive. Like I think with feminism, it's given us the choice to be dominant and to be passive. So I don't know if that did answer. All but right. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ole, too. Um, okay, here's another question, Oletu. Oh. You mentioned that people vouched for you to officially occupy leadership positions, which shows that people have faith in you as a leader. So question is, would you consider running for the SRC 2021? Let's see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so next year I do plan on, like, studying elsewhere but if I was to stay um, I think well, <laughs> I think I definitely would consider it but I I think I'm too not shy shy is not the word um, just the stress of being like president of SRC I don't know but maybe like environmental rep like I do feel I can contribute to that um, or at least be involved because um, I, I suppose being like vice chair and students council we do work closely with the SRC so I'd like understand the dynamics of it but um, it would be something I would consider so you would yeah <laughs> yes but not like high positions I think yeah that yeah okay thank you only too so you would consider running for SRC y yes yes <laughs> um, we understand that you are a leader in, a, in the environmental field too. Do you think the leadership of the country and the university are doing enough to tackle the environmental issues we are facing? 
Um, it's an interesting question because um, I, my answer, my general answer is no, and I'll tell you why. Because when we think of the environment, we think of the game reserves, we think of the beaches. It's very disconnected to the environment, and like. Um, with that notion, it kind of separates social issues. I think people don't understand that um, urban planning or climate disaster things are affecting marginalized people at a disproportionate rate. So um, in terms of addressing well, environmental issues, um, it's not integrated with social issues. And um, yeah, so I guess like I know in some like sectors like departments of forestry and stuff there are things being done but just in terms of thinking of developing the country I think we should take that active step on like just addressing you know apartheid like really scarred urban planning you know um, you know game reserves were taken from indigenous people we're not really addressing those issues or just how people who live closest to the factories are black people and they are, you know, their chances of getting cancer is, you know, probably doubled or tripled, but we're not really seeing that because we see the environment just in terms of the preservation of animals, which I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying we need to widen our lens and scope. So, yes. All right. Thank you, Oletu. So, um, before we close... There is a question to both Sue and Oluetu, but I'll start with Sue. <laughs> Oluetu, you've been. <laughs> 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 so um, what advice would you give to students who would like to run for SRC 2021? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm probably not the best place to advise on SRC leadership because I was in Student Sports Council. Um, but I have worked very closely with the SRC at WITS and here at, at, at Rhodes. Um, so I think that student leadership is really, really important. I think that this, the opportunity of being a leader at Rhodes and, and being serving on the SRC is really, really important. And I think that many students underestimate um, what the SRC does for the university. And I know firsthand how hard the SRC works for the university and for the, the betterment of their fellow students. And I know the sacrifices they make. And I think that if you have a calling to help others and you want to bring about change, um, then, then you should look at running for the SRC. Um, and I think that even if you not sure or decide not to run for the SRC, give the SRC your support because I think that the role that the SRC plays is vitally, vitally important. But I do think that it's, it's, it's a perfect opportunity to become involved as a leader um, and become involved in making a difference and bringing about change. And I think that um, if you have the chance and you're able to sacrifice your time, I think that that, that you should go for it. Um, seize the day. Thank you, Sue. Oluetu? Um, I liked the word that Sue used, um, which is so. Uh, I think in any leadership position, um, people shouldn't want to lead to put it on their CV. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think when you serve, it's mm -hmm. you take away that whole ego perspective, like what can I contribute? So, um, yeah, I think people like the idea of, you know, being at the top and people looking at you, but there's responsibilities that come with that people aren't going to see. And if you're willing to put in the work, depending on different portfolios, then, yeah, I think just in anything you do, not even leadership positions like, I always think, how can I contribute or how can I help? Not even from like a superiority complex, like, oh, I have to help people. Mm -hmm. But it's like, um, we all know something that other people don't know. And um, we live in a very socially aware time. So um, just in terms of leadership, like I said, we need representation. And more so, we need to serve from an authentic place. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much for sharing that, Ole, too. Thank you so much, Sue. So, um, firstly, I would like to thank you for emphasizing the fact that as leaders we should serve. It should be about serving. Thank you so much because you'd find that, especially in universities or student leadership, we just want to serve because we want to be known and we yeah. want to have something to write down on our CVs when we mm. leave the space. Thank you so much for reminding us that. And Sue, thank you so much for also reminding us um, about being assertive, about being assertive won't necessarily or doesn't necessarily mean that we are aggressive, that we are, but we are just occupying the spaces. We are just representing what uh, Oluit was saying. Thank you so much for that. Um, so uh, I think we are done if there are no other questions. Um, so I would like, on behalf of the SRC, I would like to thank you for taking your time and honoring our invitation and sharing your views and experiences on leadership. And we thank you for the advice to young women who aspire to be leaders and those who are already in leadership positions. And we really do hope that everyone has taken something out of this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so before we leave, we would like to remind you to thank everyone firstly for tuning in today, in today's session and for participating via comments and call and um, questions, sorry. Uh, thank you so much. Please uh, remember to tune in tomorrow. We have our last session of the series of webinars. We will be having Girl Talk, Health and Wellness. So it's still Facebook, Rhodes SRC. Thank you. Rhodes SRC webinar series, In Conversation with Women, coming back soon.